Hi, my name is Robin Wong. In this video, we are gonna have a shootout challenge between the Xiaomi's Poco X3 versus the Olympus Pen EPL 7. Let's do this. Before we dive any further, here are some important disclaimers. This video is not made to bash smartphone cameras. I personally believe that smartphone photography is the future, and I do genuinely want to see smartphone cameras improve. The main reason I'm making this video is to see how far has smartphone camera come in this year 2020. Of course, I'm going to use my own smartphone, the Xiaomi's Poco X3, which I've purchased very recently. I've also done a full review for the smartphone camera of Poco X3. I'll put a link to the video up here. Please check it out if you have not done so. The Poco X3 features a 64 megapixel main camera and an equivalent lens of 25mm f1.9. We're just going to take a look at the main camera because that is the best of what this Poco X3 has to offer. Now, I fully acknowledge that the Poco X3 is not the best representation of what a smartphone camera can do in 2020. There are better smartphone cameras out there, but I also think that it is not too far from what the flagship cameras can offer. But hey, if I can get my hands on an iPhone 12 or a loner Pixel 5, I would gladly do the same video again. Why an Olympus Pen EPL 7, you may ask? Well, I bought the Poco X3 for about 200 US dollars. With that kind of money, you can't get any of the latest cameras from Olympus this year. So we went back about five to six years and look at the EPL 7. It is still a Marco Fotis camera. It comes with a lens. I'm sure you can get a used or refurbished unit for about 200 US dollars or less. Price aside, I also think that it is unfair to compare the Poco S3, which is a budget smartphone, against high-level cameras from Olympus, say an EM5 Mark III or the EM1 Mark III. So an entry-level camera from Olympus versus a budget smartphone from Xiaomi, I think it is a much fairer comparison. I'm keeping the testing methodology really, really simple and straightforward. On the Xiaomi Poco X3, I'm just going to use the main camera. I'm going to activate the Pro Mode. I'll shoot at 64 megapixel full resolution. Everything else is left to auto, the shutter speed, as well as the ISO, I left everything to auto. Then I will match the ISO that the Xiaomi Poco X3 has decided with the EPL7. On EPL7, I'll shoot either with program mode or aperture priority mode. I won't touch anything else except the ISO so that we can get the same values as the Poco X3. Now to match the framing, I know that it is different on the Poco X3, it is a 25mm equivalent lens, while on the EPL7, the kit lens gives us about 28mm equivalents, so 28mm versus 25mm, we can't really match the composition exactly the same, but I'll try my best to match them as closely as possible. First, let's take a look at the resolution comparison between the 64 megapixel output from Poco X3 versus 16 megapixel images from the Olympus EPL7. Looking at the images side by side, without pixel peeping, they look very close to each other. In fact, it is quite difficult to tell apart which image was taken with which camera. This is a win for the Poco X3. The extra resolution clearly gives it the extra perceived sharpness to match what a micro four thirds camera can do. However, if you magnify the images, if you pixel peep, you can clearly see some issues with the Poco X3's 64 megapixel images. Somehow, there is too much noise reduction happening. It just smoothens out and destroys all the useful fine details. And these details are just lost in the images. This is counterproductive to having more resolution because if you pixel peep and compare these two images side by side, it does seem that the Olympus 16 megapixel images actually have more useful details, more fine details and contrast, making the images rendered more natural looking than what the 
over-processed image from the Poco X3 looks like. This is evident at the corner crop of this building. If you look at the green netting area, some details are clearly lost in the Poco X3's image, while the Olympus EPL7, using just the kit lens, managed to maintain and resolve the fine details, rendering a much more realistic looking output. It is very important to note that the 64 megapixel image sensor in the Poco X3 was designed for pixel binning. This simply means that four pixels are meant to be binded together into one optimized pixel. The 64 megapixels are to be downsampled to an optimized 16 megapixel image output. Therefore, if you use the 64 megapixel resolution, which was not meant to be used, you, the camera will have to interpolate the missing information information, this will create a lot of problems such as ugly artifacts, false patterns and color aberrations. This will clearly show in more complicated scenes such as these backlit leaves. You'll see certain colors that's not supposed to be there but it's clearly shown in the 64 megapixel capture. Just a quick note on the color, I did mention in my Poco X3's review that there is something wrong with the color rendering and here now in the Poco X3's images being put side by side against the EPL7, you can clearly see the obvious difference. The Olympus EPL7 renders a more natural, true to life, pleasing looking colors while the Poco X3's renders the colors that's looking a little bit off. The blue in the sky is not exactly the same blue that I remember seeing and there is a shift to magenta in the reds and the colors just get worse if we are shooting in artificial light. Now I fully acknowledge that this is not an issue for most people. The colors are still vibrant, they look very consumer friendly, they're fully saturated, high in contrast but if you truly care about color accuracy, if you are a photographer and if you really want the best colors in your images then the Poco X3's colors are not the best representation of true life. Dynamic range is a very interesting topic to look at. The Olympus EPL7 having a larger micro four thirds image sensor can squeeze a lot more details in the highlight and shadow region in the single capture image. Of course, dealing with a tiny image sensor in the Poco X3 smartphone, you do have to engage a software processing trick using the HDR to capture multiple images to be merged together to maximize dynamic range. The results from the Poco X3's HDR versus a single capture from the EPL7, they do look very close to each other. In fact, the Poco X3 managed to squeeze a little bit more detail in the highlight and shadow region. But before you say that, hey, you know what, Olympus should learn this processing trick to maximize dynamic range from the smartphones. Before you say that, if you truly pixel peep and look at the details of these process images, they do look overbaked. Now, perhaps too many images were taken and they, they overlap against each other and they are not merged properly together or there's just too much software processing happening, there is artifacts. The images do look smeared, the pixels don't look like they have maintained the integrity. Something doesn't look right, it looks a little bit too mushy and painterly. Now of course everything looks fine if you don't pixel peep. It still looks perfectly usable from a consumer's point of view. But if you are a critical photographer, if you look at the images critically, then you will see there's something wrong with all these processed HDR or super dynamic range images from the smartphone. The Poco S3 falls apart very quickly in low light shooting. There is no point for comparison. All the extra resolution of the Poco S3, the 64 megapixel, they all go down the drain. The images from the Poco S3 shot at ISO 1600, 3200 or beyond, they look more like two or three megapixel images. And even so, these are very poor looking three megapixel images. What is the point of having all this resolution, so many megapixels, if the images fall apart so quickly once you bump up the ISO just a little bit? It doesn't make any sense. Of course, the Olympus EPL7 having a much larger image sensor managed to produce much more decent looking images. Even at ISO 3200 and 6400, the structural pixel integrity, they were still very well maintained. The images still look like images, of course, there's noise and grain, but at least they don't look like painting, they don't look like mush, which was exactly what it was for the Poco X3. 
That's all I have to share about the Poco X3 versus the Olympus EPL7. I fully acknowledge that this is not a fair comparison. The Olympus EPL7 having a larger micro four thirds image sensor and it's a dedicated camera system. However, I do genuinely want the smartphone cameras to improve and I can only see two possible ways moving forward. One, the hardware and two, the software. Hardware just slap in a one inch image sensor. We already have an amazing one inch image sensor from the RX100 Sony series, or it's the same image sensor used in the Panasonic LX10 series, as well as the Canon G G7X series. That one inch 20 megapixel image sensor is amazing. It will give clearly one stop or maybe two stops better dynamic range and high ISO performance versus any of the smaller sensors that's available today in the smartphones. I also fully acknowledge that some of the image sensors from Huawei, the latest flagship, as well as from Samsung, these image sensors are really huge and they are almost approaching the one inch size. Why don't we just put in the one inch image sensor? What's so difficult anyway? Of course, to match the image sensor, we need a high quality lens. The optics will have to match to be able to capture all these fine details. We'll have to resolve all these contrast to render a more realistic, pleasing looking images. Hardware aside, software is also very important. I don't think that the, the camera manufacturers will have to learn anything from the smartphone manufacturers. In fact, it is the opposite. The smartphone manufacturers should learn from the camera manufacturers on how to maintain the pixel integrity, not just stretch, process, and destroy all the pixels for the sake of all this HDR processing. It doesn't work that way. You can stretch and pull the image as much as you want, What's the point at the end of the day when the image looks like a painting? It doesn't look like an image anymore. You can stretch the image, you can process the image as much as you want, but you also must maintain the image looking like an image. The pixels will still have to be pixels at the end of the day. Having this hardware being pushed to the maximum, the one inch image sensor and high quality optics to match, and a high quality professional level image processing Put this all together and true in image stabilization, come on, it's 2020, it's not difficult to do. True image stabilization, then we will have a truly capable smartphone camera system. If you found this video useful, please consider buying me a cup of coffee or you can contribute directly to my PayPal account. I'll put the links in the description below on how you can do that. Any small contribution can go a long way and help me to make similar videos like this and publish them right here. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Please consider subscribing and I'll definitely see you again in the next one. Until then, please go out and take more photographs. Bye-bye. Oh,